lovely people, so I am back and I'm going to start something new if you like. So the aim is at the moment to, on a Tuesday, I'm thinking about doing a, uh, a tarot deck Tuesday if you like. So every Tuesday, probably around about 10am GMT time, I should be posting a video of a tarot deck unboxing because, um, because I have far too many <laughs> and I thought it'd be quite nice to share. I had, uh, I had for that kind of a little bit of background, I had, I've had two channels that I'm just recently kind of merging all into one over on this one here. Um, and on my other channel, I did have a lot of, a lot of tarot unboxings and things like that. And I'm just kind of, well, I'm going to refilm the ones that I've already done and film the new ones for the new decks that I've got and just kind of freshen everything up and, you know, get myself organised, get my ducks in a row, as it were. So, I thought we'd kick off with uh, the Wicker deck. So, the Wicker deck is one of the first um, tarot unboxings I did. Um, years and years ago now and so I think it's time for a bit of a you know a refresh and a rechat. So let's give you some background some background. The Wicker deck by Sally Morningstar is now uh called the Wicker Oracle I believe and I'll leave um any kind of links or anything I'll leave it down below for those of you that are interested. The Wicker deck I have the the box the box marked the box marked the Wicker deck. I believe it's now called the Wicker Oracle but it's still it's still made up of the same it's still made up of the same cards and all the same bits and pieces. I I believe that the box it comes in now is slightly bigger. So my version, the old version, is uh, forty two cards and a sixty four page book. So this book and it is it's my my book is printed in like a lovely kind of purple on white paper, and it's this is one of. I think this is one of the first five decks that I bought a, a good number of years ago. Now, um, I have uh, made a video on the tarot and I will, I'll link it up for those of you that have, have never read tarot or never worked with tarot or oracle before. Um, I've got a, a video about tarot and oracle, how to work with it, the differences between the two and and it's like a, a, a whirlwind starter if you like, so I'll, I'll, I'll tag the links down below as well and I'll try and make sure it's you know in the cards at the end or whatever I'm supposed to do that. This is uh, an oracle deck so it's not made up of the tarot format at all um, and let's start with let's start with cardstock basically so the backs of my cards are purple with the pentacle on the back. Um, I, I Again I believe that the slightly newer version I believe the backs of the cards are black um, they are, if you know me at all, you know that I moan a lot about the size of tarot decks because the artwork on tarot decks and oracle decks has, it's got so beautiful in the last 10 years. There's, there's, I mean, they're just fab, real sort of pe just pieces of creative expression just on their own that they're sort of beautiful. And Obviously, the cards have got kind of bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as the imagery has got, you know, more and more elaborate, which is lovely. But of course, when you're trying to work with them and shuffle them, you're like, it's not the cards everywhere. So I do moan, I apologise. And for every tarot unboxing, for every tarot Tuesday that I do, I will moan about the size of the cards because that's who I am. So I'm sorry. These cards are um, slightly bigger than average. So... That's my hand, if you like. And so that's kind of like the, the deck size. Uh, every card has writing on it at the bottom and a number and a board around the outside. Now, I have seen people go into like hobby craft and places like that and buy like the, the corner cutters and edge everything and cut all the borders off. I literally don't think I could do it. I don't think I could take anything scissor related to a deck of cards, but I have got quite a few decks that have got these kind of white borders um, and just sort of taking them off would potentially make them a little bit more manageable. But I digress and these ones aren't as big as some of the ones I've got, so 
perfect. Um, they come in, so yeah, 42 cards, and every single one has uh, pagan symbolism and pagan imagery. So let's have a look at some of the cards. So, I'll try and get it without my light flickering all over the cards. So this is the pentacle. And then we've got the candle. I'm going to hold it in the middle. Yeah, there you go. So the candle and then the silver bow. Um, this one's a lovely one. So the mirror with the phoenix in the mirror, as in rising from the flames. Um, crystal ball, again, another lovely one. There's lots of uh, pagan symbolism in this. So you will find, so you will find, sorry, you will find uh, ravens and animals and athames and spiders, all aspects on this deck. This one, the chalice, um, always reminds me of the Ace of Cups in the traditional tarot. Um, and again, the wand. And I think that these particular cards are a real, real nice kind of respectful nod to the original tarot and the symbolism of the original tarot and how we read. But because they are driven at sort of pagans, witches, Wiccans, there is also that sort of real lovely feminine energy that that these cards embody. Um, for the for the real traditional symbol lovers out there. He's nice, isn't he? So yes, there are there are lots of symbols and symbolism that you will recognise as you go through this deck. Um, it's made of a really good cardstock. It's nice. It's worn really well because mine is, I don't know, ten. I don't know how many years old now. Old. Um, and it's worn really well. And I do. I use it quite a bit. The edges haven't frayed, and it's it stayed pretty much pretty much intact. Now the guide book that comes with it is written by Sally Morningstar, and the uh, illustrations on the deck are done by uh, Danuta Mayer. I apologise if I have just butchered your name. Um, that's how it reads to me. Um, you get a really good breakdown inside the inside the guidebook of so every card gets its own page with uh, a meaning, a high note, a low note, vibrations, and keywords as to what each card means, and there's a write-up in the beginning, a little bit of an introduction. And then at the end, one of the things that really has really kind of worked for me with this particular deck is that she, Sally has put in some spreads that she advises that you do. So there are the traditional, sort of the card of the day, and then the, the quick spread, the three card spread, which if you've done any kind of reading, is like past, present and future. You, you know you can kind of get a good get a good go with that kind of thing but the one that really really works for me is this one the star spread it's a seven card it's a seven card draw um and it, it talks about it's a real deep it's a real deep reading and it's advised on here that you only do it once or twice a year and i have done it pretty much every year since I've bought this deck. And it really is, it, it proper gets into the issues. So for instance, the way that the, the, the spread is laid out in seven cards, each card obviously denotes to a certain meaning. So you've got what's restricting you, what are the subconscious factors, what lessons are you learning, the action required, what is your gift and how you move it forward. And inside of where each of those cards sits, it has its kind of planetary denotation. So Saturn, the Moon, Mercury, Jupiter, where you fall if astrolog if you are kind of astrologic, astrological in your understanding as well. But also inside of each card is a full explanation as to 
what you are looking for. It tells you that if some of those cards are negative, if negative cards fall in these positions or if positive cards fall in these positions, it's a really, really good reading. Um, there's also uh, relationship spreads in here, relationship potential reading in here. And then the other one that I really like is the Ascension spread. Again, another seven card spread that um, works with your chakras and with the aligning of the chakras and you lay the cards seven in order, again, with a full explanation as to what that's supposed to mean. So this is one of my all time favourites. And it's the one it's the one that I'll always recommend to anybody with a remotely pagan leaning. If you if your spiritual path is even remotely nature bound, then this is this is a fantastic deck. So that's the kind of the literal, the 3D information, if you like. For me, this the energy of this deck is with the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck. I find that the energy of of the traditional tarot to be very, very kind of honest, very stoic. It can be quite hard at times, and you kind of you know don't take your silly problems to the Rider Waite tarot because it will kick your butt. This is a real nature centric deck. The energy is very, very different to the traditional right away Smith. Um, it has a real uh, ethereal and magical energy, which I know sounds, you know, obvious considering it's a, it's a wicker deck, but it, it does feel like it's supposed to feel. Um, the, the images on the cards use all the things inside of a nature bound path that you would expect. So you're getting those real low nature bound tones, color tones and earth tones. There's a lot of kind of water energy in this deck as well. Um, and a lot of moon energy. So it is for me a real kind of magical feminine and yet nature bound supportive deck um so yeah this is this is one of my this is one of my all-time favorites so i will leave any links down below because as i said i think i said at the beginning i've got the wicker deck one of the older versions i believe it's now called the wicker oracle i'm sure i've said that already i'm sorry if i'm repeating myself but i'll leave links down below to just like where it is on amazon and in case you want to find it um, I hope you have enjoyed this first Tarot Tuesday. The idea is, is that I'm going to stay largely on topic, which is shockingly difficult for me to do because being largely on topic is not my default setting. Um, and I will see you next Tuesday where I think, just going to have a quick look, I think I'm going to do, I'll either do the Spirit Animal Oracle deck or I'll do the Sacred Rebels, I think, next. But... I've got a few to choose from. So so we've got a good few weeks of Tarot Tuesdays. Um, I hope everyone is well and I will see you all soon. Take care.